These might be the scariest structures ever. This could be the scariest bridge in America. What makes it so terrifying to cross? Well, it's really high, almost 200 feet in spots, and it's 4.3 miles long from end to end. For some motorists, getting behind the wheel and driving across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge in Maryland is simply out of the question. What happened was I suffered a major panic attack. My peripheral vision went black. I thought I was gonna pass out into oncoming traffic. Carolyn Casey is so afraid, she actually hired a guy to do the driving for her. For 25 bucks, Bay Bridge drivers took Carolyn in her own car over the bridge. Dude, I'm really nervous. <laughs> In 2015, Les Trent went along for the ride. And I'll just meet you there at 7 o'clock. How many times a day do you do this, Alex? Uh, today, this is number 19. This is 19? So far, yes. Carolyn, what is it about coming across this bridge? Like, I just want him to stop looking at you and bring oh, me a mirror. <laughs> is this okay for you going across this bridge uh, as slow as we're going with traffic? Or Yeah, not. It, it's not great, no. It's not great. No, I, I'm sweating. Anymore. What is it about the d design of this bridge, do you think, that freaks so many it's people like out? functionally obsolete. Look at it. There's no there's no emergency pull-off. Those barricades are only about four feet That's tall. That's right. A truck went over it. She we don't talk bridge. about the bridge, Les. We just made it across the bridge. How do you feel? I feel much better. <laughs> I can't see the end. It's, it's, it's endless. In 2019, Heather Steinmiller summoned up all her courage and took a ride with Les Trent and a driving instructor through the Hamptons Road Tunnel in Virginia. Some call it the scariest tunnel in America. Oh my God, it's narrow. It is low. Being next to vehicles like this, maybe there's a touch of claustrophobia coming into play. At the time, Heather hadn't been able to drive through the tunnel by herself for 20 years. This is probably the worst part because it's the lowest part of it's the, the lowest part one trick to dealing with tunnel phobia is to say out loud what's happening around you like a running commentary other tips include desensitizing yourself by watching videos of people driving through tunnels breathing deeply while the car is in the tunnel and bring along a trusted friend or family member when i see that these cars are starting to head up, I know there's an end to it. Many call this skyscraper the most terrifying building in the world. Tom Hanks sure thought so. In 2017, he was taking a stroll when he spotted the building and tweeted, this is the scariest building I've ever seen. What goes on inside? His tweet sent social media into a frenzy of speculation. One person said it's the Men in Black headquarters. I have definitely heard that there's maybe some secret government stuff in there. One thing people notice is there are no windows on any of its 29 floors. Those are giant air vents. So what gives? Stephen Fabian explained. Well, we can now solve the mystery, or at least part of it. Turns out the building is owned by AT&T, and it doesn't have any windows for a reason. It may be the only skyscraper in New York City built to withstand a nuclear blast. There's reportedly enough food, water, and generator fuel to sustain 1,500 people for two weeks. According to the documentary Project X, the building houses AT&T's telecommunications infrastructure, and also serves as a listening post for the NSA. When approaching facility, ring the buzzer and wait for admittance. Just look at the building. It's got no windows. It looks like something from a space movie. The building is very sensitive to the sun and temperature, so that's why you have these big vents that you can regulate, like basically a big air conditioner. When Inside Edition tried to walk inside to get more answers, security said the place was off limits to cameras. I thought maybe the little a little girl ran by, um, thinking she walked by really fast. Something, did we miss her? John and Jessica Mosling visited the famed Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado in 2017. They took a guided spirit tour that explained the 108-year-old building's haunted history. While walking around, they snapped this photo, and at the bottom of the image was something unexpected. So even if you look at the picture, you notice nobody's looking there. You know, they're all looking at the tour guide. So, I mean, you just don't excuse something like that. You know, a girl wearing her so-called, what I thought was, looked like pajamas. Or some kind of just, white gown. Yeah. 
The couple called the hotel to see if any children were staying there the night they took the tour, and the hotel reportedly told them no. The Stanley Hotel is well known for its paranormal activity. When author Stephen King stayed there, he said he had a nightmare so scary it inspired him to write The Shining. Here's Johnny! <laughs> the year before, another guest tried to snap a photo of the empty lobby, but ended up with a photo of what looks to be a woman at the top of the staircase. They speak of uh, uh, several um, things that you know might occur while you stay there, like little children running the hallways at night, your doorknob rattling, possibly somebody grabbing your feet when you're sleeping, and I'm not quite sure how how I would handle that or how the wife would handle it, but um, it would be uh, one heck of an experience. This home is at the center of a spine-tingling mystery. A stalker known as The Watcher terrorized the homeowners with a series of letters. You have children, I have seen them, The Watcher wrote. Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Your house is my obsession, and now you are too. Their story was told in the 2022 Netflix drama series The Watcher, starring Naomi Watts. In real life, Derek and Maria Broadus bought the house in Westville, New Jersey for $1.3 million. The first Watcher letter addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Broadus arrived three days later. Who has the bedroom facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It's a beautiful house. It absolutely is. I think it's everyone's dream house. Attorney Lee Levitt represented the Broadus family who sued the previous homeowners for allegedly failing to tell them about the existence of the watcher when they sold the house. The case was dismissed. You're moving into your dream home and you start getting these threatening letters from someone saying they're watching you and then asking for young blood. I think that's very scary. Can you keep us safe? Unlike the Netflix drama, the Broadus family never moved in. They were too frightened. Les Trent visited the Watcher home. As you can see, it's decorated for Halloween. The search for the elusive Watcher turned neighbor against neighbor in this idyllic town of upscale homes. Some investigators believe the Watcher must live nearby. Others wondered whether the homeowners themselves were engineering an elaborate hoax. I can tell you unequivocally, that is not true. Uh, they did not write these letters. After five years of disappointments, the Broadus family finally sold the Watcher house for $959,000, a loss of $400,000. The Watcher has never been identified. The final letter declared that the Watcher won. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andreas Wendell.